Norway, Wikipedia article audio. Indigenous status. Etymology. History. Prehistory. Bronze Age. Iron Age. Migration period. Viking Age. Civil War and Empire. Kalmar Union. Union with Denmark. Union with Sweden. Dissolution of the Union. First and Second World Wars. Post World War II history. Geography. Climate. Biodiversity. Environment. Politics and government. Administrative divisions. Judicial system and law enforcement. Foreign relations. Military. Health. Economy. Resources. Minority status. Oil fields. Transport. Norway, Norwegian, Norge or Noreg, Northern Sami, Norga, officially the Kingdom of Norway, is a sovereign state and unitary monarchy whose territory comprises the western portion of the Scandinavian peninsula plus the remote island of Jan Mayen and the archipelago of Svalbard. The Antarctic Peter I Island and the sub-Antarctic Bouvet Island are dependent territories and thus not considered part of the kingdom. Norway also lays claim to a section of Antarctica known as Queen Maud Land. Until 1814, the kingdom included the Faroe Islands, Greenland, and Iceland. It also included Bohuslän until 1658. Jamtland and Harjitaland until 1645, Shetland and Orkney until 1468, and the Hebrides and Isle of Man until 1266. Demographics Migration Norway has a total area of 385,252 square kilometers and a population of 5,258,317. The country shares a long eastern border with Sweden. Norway is bordered by Finland and Russia to the northeast, and the Skagerrak Strait to the south, with Denmark on the other side. Norway has an extensive coastline, facing the North Atlantic Ocean and the Barents Sea. King Harald V of the Dano-German House of Glucksberg is the current King of Norway. Ernest Solberg became Prime Minister in 2013, and was re-elected in September, 2017. Ernest Solberg replaced Jens Stoltenberg who was the Prime Minister between 2000-2001 and 2005-2013. A constitutional monarchy, Norway divides state power between the Parliament, the Cabinet and the Supreme Court, as determined by the 1814 Constitution. The Kingdom was established as a merger of a large number of petty kingdoms. By the traditional count from the year 872, the kingdom has existed continuously for 1,145 years, and the list of Norwegian monarchs includes over 60 kings and earls. Norway has both administrative and political subdivisions on two levels, counties and municipalities. The Sami people have a certain amount of self-determination and influence over traditional territories through the Sami Parliament and the Finnmark Act. Norway maintains close ties with both the European Union and the United States. Norway is a founding member of the United Nations, NATO, the European Free Trade Association, the Council of Europe, the Antarctic Treaty, and the Nordic Council 
a member of the European Economic Area, the WDO, and the OECD, and a part of the Schengen Area. The country maintains a combination of market economy and a Nordic welfare model with universal health care and a comprehensive social security system. Norway has extensive reserves of petroleum, natural gas, minerals, lumber, seafood, fresh water, and hydropower. The petroleum industry accounts for around a quarter of the country's gross domestic product. On a per capita basis, Norway is the world's largest producer of oil and natural gas outside the Middle East. The country has the fourth highest per capita income in the world on the World Bank and IMF lists. On the CIA's GDP per capita list which includes autonomous territories and regions, Norway ranks as number 11. It has the world's largest sovereign wealth fund, with a value of 1 trillion US dollars. Norway has had the highest human development index ranking in the world since 2009, a position also held previously between 2001 and 2006. It also has the highest inequality adjusted ranking. Norway ranks first on the World Happiness Report, the OECD Better Life Index, the Index of Public Integrity, and the Democracy Index. Norway has two official names, Norgen Bukmal and Noregen Nynorsk. The English name Norway comes from the Old English word Norweg mentioned in 880, meaning Northern Way or Way leading to the north, which is how the Anglo-Saxons referred to the coastline of Atlantic Norway. The Anglo-Saxons of Britain also referred to the Kingdom of Norway in 880 as Normanna Land. There is some disagreement about whether the native name of Norway originally had the same etymology as the English form. According to the traditional undisputed view, the first component was originally Nor, a cognate of English North, so the full name was Norvegr, the way northwards, referring to the sailing route along the Norwegian coast, and contrasting with Servger Southern Way for Germany and Ostravagri Eastern Way for the Baltic. According to another theory, the first component was a word nor, meaning narrow or northern, referring to the inner archipelago sailing route through the land. The interpretation as northern, as reflected in the English and Latin forms of the name, would then have been due to later folk etymology. This latter view originated with philologist Niels Halvorsen Trenes in 1847, since 2016 it is also advocated by language student and activist Klaus Johann Merval and was adopted by philology professor Michael Schult. The form Noer is still used in place names such as the village of Noer and Lake Norefjorden in Buskerud County, and still has the same meaning. Among other arguments in favor of the theory, it is pointed out that the word has a long vowel in skaldic poetry and is not attested within any native Norse texts or inscriptions. This resurrected theory has received some pushback by other scholars on various grounds, e.g. the uncontroversial presence of the element nor in the ethnonym normar norseman, Norwegian person, and the adjective norn northern, Norse. Norwegian, as well as the very early attestations of the Latin and Anglo-Saxon forms with. In a Latin manuscript of 849, the name Northuagia is mentioned, while a French chronicle of c. 900 uses the names Northwegia and Norwegia. When Othir of Haligoland visited King Alfred the Great in England in the end of the 9th century, the land was called Norwegr and Normanna land. The adjective Norwegian, recorded from c. 1600, is derived from the Latinization of the name as Norwegia, in the adjective Norwegian, the Old English spelling weg has survived. Old Norse Normer was Latinized as Nordmanius in the 9th century to mean Norseman and also Viking, 
giving rise to the name of the Normans. After Norway had become Christian, Norgr and Norgi had become the most common forms, but during the 15th century, the newer forms Noreg and Norge, found in medieval Icelandic manuscripts, took over and have survived until the modern day. The first inhabitants were the Ehrensberg culture, which was a late Upper Paleolithic culture during the Younger Dryas, the last period of cold at the end of the Weichsel glaciation. The culture is named after the village of Ehrensberg, 25 km northeast of Hamburg in the German state of Schleswig-Holstein, where wooden arrow shafts and clubs have been excavated. The earliest traces of human occupation in Norway are found along the coast, where the huge ice shelf of the last ice age first melted between 11,000 and 8,000 BC. The oldest finds are stone tools dating from 9,500 to 6,000 BC, discovered in Finnmark in the north and Rogaland in the southwest. However, theories about two altogether different cultures were rendered obsolete in the 1970s. More recent finds along the entire coast revealed to archaeologists that the difference between the two can simply be ascribed to different types of tools and not to different cultures. Coastal fauna provided a means of livelihood for fishermen and hunters, who may have made their way along the southern coast about 10,000 BC when the interior was still covered with ice. It is now thought that these so-called Arctic peoples came from the south and followed the coast northward considerably later. In the southern part of the country are dwelling sites dating from about 5000 BC. Finds from these sites give a clearer idea of the life of the hunting and fishing peoples. The implements vary in shape and mostly are made of different kinds of stone, those of later periods are more skillfully made. Rock carvings have been found, usually near hunting and fishing grounds. They represent games such as deer, reindeer, elk, bears, birds, seals, whales, and fish, all of which were vital to the way of life of the coastal peoples. The carvings at Alta in Finnmark, the largest in Scandinavia, were made at sea level from 4200 to 500 BC and marked the progression of the land as the sea rose after the last ice age ended. Between 3000 and 2500 BC, new settlers arrived in eastern Norway. They were Indo-European farmers who grew grain and kept cows and sheep. The hunting-fishing population of the west coast was also gradually replaced by farmers, though hunting and fishing remained useful secondary means of livelihood. From about 1500 BC, bronze was gradually introduced, but the use of stone implements continued, Norway had few riches to barter for bronze goods and the few finds consist mostly of elaborate weapons and brooches that only chieftains could afford. Huge burial cairns built close to the sea as far north as Harstad and also inland in the south are characteristic of this period. The motifs of the rock carvings differ from those typical of the Stone Age. Representations of the sun, animals, trees, weapons, ships, and people are all strongly stylized. Thousands of rock carvings from this period depict ships, and the large stone burial monuments known as stone ships, suggest that ships and seafaring played an important role in the culture at large. The depicted ships, most likely represent sewn plank-built canoes used for warfare, fishing, and trade. These ship types may have their origin as far back as the Neolithic period and they continue into the pre-Roman Iron Age, as exemplified by the Jort Spring Boat. Little has been found dating from the early Iron Age. The dead were cremated, and their graves contain few burial goods. During the first four centuries AD the people of Norway were in contact with Roman-occupied Gaul. 
About 70 Roman bronze cauldrons, often used as burial urns, have been found. Contact with the civilized countries farther south brought a knowledge of runes, the oldest known Norwegian runic inscription dates from the 3rd century. At this time, the amount of settled area in the country increased, a development that can be traced by coordinated studies of topography, archaeology, and place names. The oldest root names, such as Ness, Vic, and B, are of great antiquity, dating perhaps from the Bronze Age, whereas the earliest of the groups of compound names with the suffixes Ven or Heim, as in Bjergven or Shame, usually date from the 1st century AD. Archaeologists first made the decision to divide the Iron Age of Northern Europe into distinct pre-Roman and Roman Iron Ages after Emil Vittel unearthed a number of Iron Age artifacts in 1866 on the island of Bornholm. They did not exhibit the same permeating Roman influence seen in most other artifacts from the early centuries AD indicating that parts of northern Europe had not yet come into contact with the Romans at the beginning of the Iron Age. The destruction of the Western Roman Empire by the Germanic peoples in the 5th century is characterized by rich finds, including tribal chiefs' graves containing magnificent weapons and gold objects. Hill forts were built on precipitous rocks for defense. Excavation has revealed stone foundations of farmhouses 18 to 27 meters long one even 46 meters long the roofs of which were supported on wooden posts. These houses were family homesteads where several generations lived together, with people and cattle under one roof. These states were based on either clans or tribes. By the 9th century, each of these small states had things, for negotiating and settling disputes. The thing meeting places, each eventually with a horg or a heathen hof, were usually situated on the oldest and best farms, which belonged to the chieftains and wealthiest farmers. The regional things united to form even larger units, assemblies of deputy yeomen from several regions. In this way, the Lagding developed. The Gulating had its meeting place by Sognefjord and may have been the center of an aristocratic confederation along the western fjords and islands called the Gulatingslag. The Frostating was the assembly for the leaders in the Trondheim's fjord area, the Earls of Laid, near Trondheim, seem to have enlarged the Frostating Slag by adding the coastland from Romsdali's fjord to Lofoten. From the 8th to the 10th century, the wider Scandinavian region was the source of Vikings. The looting of the monastery at Lindisfarne in northeast England in 793 by Norse people has long been regarded as the event which marked the beginning of the Viking Age. This age was characterized by expansion and emigration by Viking seafarers. They colonized, raided, and traded in all parts of Europe. Norwegian Viking explorers first discovered Iceland by accident in the 9th century when heading for the Faroe Islands, and eventually came across Vinland, known today as Newfoundland, in Canada. The Vikings from Norway were most active in the northern and western British Isles and eastern North America Isles. According to tradition, Harald Fairhair unified them into one in 872 after the Battle of Hafersfjord in Stavanger, thus becoming the first king of a united Norway. Harald's realm was mainly a South Norwegian coastal state. Fairhair ruled with a strong hand and according to the sagas, many Norwegians left the country to live in Iceland, the Faroe Islands, Greenland, and parts of Britain and Ireland. The modern-day Irish cities of Dublin, Limerick, and Waterford were founded by Norwegian settlers. Norse traditions were slowly replaced by Christian ones in the late 10th and early 11th centuries. 
One of the most important sources for the history of the 11th century Vikings is the treaty between the Icelanders and Olaf Haraldsson, king of Norway circa 1015 to 1028. This is largely attributed to the missionary kings Olaf Tryggvason and St. Olav. Haakon the Good was Norway's first Christian king, in the mid-10th century, though his attempt to introduce the religion was rejected. Born sometime in between 963-969, Olaf Tryggvason set off raiding in England with 390 ships. He attacked London during this raiding. Arriving back in Norway in 995, Olav landed in Moster. There he built a church which became the first Christian church ever built in Norway. From Moster, Olav sailed north to Trondheim where he was proclaimed king of Norway by the Eirething in 995. Feudalism never really developed in Norway or Sweden as it did in the rest of Europe. However, the administration of government took on a very conservative feudal character. The Hansa Attic League forced the royalty to cede to them greater and greater concessions over foreign trade and the economy. The League had this hold over the royalty because of the loans the Hansa had made to the royalty and the large debt the kings were carrying. The League's monopolistic control over the economy of Norway put pressure on all classes, especially the peasantry, to the degree that no real burgher class existed in Norway. From the 1040s to 1130 the country was at peace. In 1130 the Civil War era broke out on the basis of unclear succession laws, which allowed all the king's sons to rule jointly. For periods there could be peace, before a lesser son allied himself with a chieftain and started a new conflict. The Archdiocese of Nidaros was created in 1152 and attempted to control the appointment of kings. The church inevitably had to take sides in the conflicts, with the civil wars also becoming an issue regarding the church's influence of the king. The wars ended in 1217 with the appointment of Hakon Hakonsson, who introduced clear law of succession. From 1000 to 1300 the population increased from 150,000 to 400,000, resulting both in more land being cleared and the subdivision of farms. While in the Viking Age all farmers owned their own land, by 1,370% of the land was owned by the king, the church, or the aristocracy. This was a gradual process which took place because of farmers borrowing money in poor times and not being able to repay. However, tenants always remained free men and the large distances and often scattered ownership meant that they enjoyed much more freedom than continental serfs. In the 13th century about 20% of a farmer's yield went to the king, church, and landowners. The 14th century is described as Norway's golden age, with peace and increase in trade, especially with the British islands, although Germany became increasingly important towards the end of the century. Throughout the High Middle Ages the king established Norway as a sovereign state with a central administration and local representatives. Sami Emigration Immigration Religion Largest cities of Norway Education Languages Culture Human Rights Religion 2 Cinema Music Literature Research Architecture Art Cuisine Sports International Rankings Notes Bibliography Jewish
Traveler, Forest Finn, Romani, Kvin. 323,000 have a Western background, 505,000 have a non Western background. 1952 Winter Olympics in Oslo, 1994 Winter Olympics in Lillehammer. In 1349 the Black Death spread to Norway and had within a year killed a third of the population. Later plagues reduced the population to half the starting point by 1400. Many communities were entirely wiped out, resulting in an abundance of land, allowing farmers to switch to more animal husbandry. The reduction in taxes weakened the king's position and many aristocrats lost the basis for their surplus, reducing some to mere farmers. High tithes to church made it increasingly powerful and the archbishop became a member of the Council of State. The Hansa Attic League took control over Norwegian trade during the 14th century and established a trading center in Bergen. In 1380 Olaf Hakonsson inherited both the Norwegian and Danish thrones, creating a union between the two countries. In 1397, under Margaret I, the Kalmar Union was created between the three Scandinavian countries. She waged war against the Germans, resulting in a trade blockade and higher taxation on Norwegians which resulted in a rebellion. However, the Norwegian Council of State was too weak to pull out of the Union. Margaret pursued a centralizing policy which inevitably favored Denmark, because it had a greater population than Norway and Sweden combined. Margaret also granted trade privileges to the Hansa Attic merchants of Lübeck in Bergen in return for recognition of her right to rule and these hurt the Norwegian economy. The Hansa Attic merchants formed a state within a state in Bergen for generations. Even worse were the pirates, the Avital brothers, who launched three devastating raids on the port. Norway slipped ever more to the background under the Oldenburg dynasty. There was one revolt under Nut Alvsen in 1502. Norwegians had some affection for King Christian II, who resided in the country for several years. Norway took no part in the events which led to Swedish independence from Denmark in the 1520s. Upon the death of Haakon V in 1319, Magnus Eriksson, at just three years old, inherited the throne as King Magnus VII of Norway. At the same time, a movement to make Magnus king of Sweden proved successful, and both the kings of Sweden and of Denmark were elected to the throne by their respective nobles, thus, with his election to the throne of Sweden, both Sweden and Norway were united under King Magnus VII. In 1349, the Black Death radically altered Norway killing between 50% and 60% of its population and leaving it in a period of social and economic decline. The plague left Norway very poor. Although the death rate was comparable with the rest of Europe, economic recovery took much longer because of the small, scattered population. Even before the plague, the population was only about 500,000. After the plague, many farms lay idle while the population slowly increased. However, the few surviving farms' tenants found their bargaining positions with their landlords greatly strengthened. King Magnus VII ruled Norway until 1350, when his son, Haakon, was placed on the throne as Haakon VI. In 1363, Haakon VI married Margaret, the daughter of King Valdemar IV of Denmark. Upon the death of Haakon VI in 1379, his son, Olaf IV, was only ten years old. 
Olaf had already been elected to the throne of Denmark on May 3, 1376. Thus, upon Olaf's accession to the throne of Norway, Denmark and Norway entered personal union. Olaf's mother and Haakon's widow, Queen Margaret, managed the foreign affairs of Denmark and Norway during the minority of Olaf IV. Margaret was working toward a union of Sweden with Denmark and Norway by having Olaf elected to the Swedish throne. She was on the verge of achieving this goal when Olaf IV suddenly died. However, Denmark made Margaret temporary ruler upon the death of Olaf. On February 2, 1388, Norway followed suit and crowned Margaret. Queen Margaret knew that her power would be more secure if she were able to find a king to rule in her place. She settled on Eric of Pomerania, grandson of her sister. Thus at an all-Scandinavian meeting held at Kalmar, Eric of Pomerania was crowned king of all three Scandinavian countries. Thus, royal politics resulted in personal unions between the Nordic countries eventually bringing the thrones of Norway, Denmark, and Sweden under the control of Queen Margaret when the country entered into the Kalmar Union. After Sweden broke out of the Kalmar Union in 1521, Norway tried to follow suit, but the subsequent rebellion was defeated, and Norway remained in a union with Denmark until 1814 a total of 434 years. During the national romanticism of the 19th century, this period was by some referred to as the 400-year night, since all of the kingdom's royal, intellectual, and administrative power was centered in Copenhagen in Denmark. In fact, it was a period of great prosperity and progress for Norway especially in terms of shipping and foreign trade, and it also secured the country's revival from the demographic catastrophe it suffered in the Black Death. Based on the respective natural resources, Denmark-Norway was in fact a very good match since Denmark supported Norway's needs for grain and food supplies, and Norway supplied Denmark with timber, metal, and fish. With the introduction of Protestantism in 1536, the archbishopric in Trondheim was dissolved, and Norway lost its independence, and effectually became a colony of Denmark. The church's incomes and possessions were instead redirected to the court in Copenhagen. Norway lost the steady stream of pilgrims to the relics of St. Olav at the Nidaros Shrine and with them, much of the contact with cultural and economic life in the rest of Europe. Eventually restored as a kingdom in 1661, Norway saw its land area decrease in the 17th century with the loss of the provinces Bohuslän, Jämtland, and Herjedaland to Sweden, as the result of a number of disastrous wars with Sweden. In the north, however, its territory was increased by the acquisition of the northern provinces of Troms and Finnmark, at the expense of Sweden and Russia. The famine of 1695-1696 killed roughly 10% of Norway's population. The harvest failed in Scandinavia at least nine times between 1740 and 1800, with great loss of life. After Denmark-Norway was attacked by the United Kingdom at the Battle of Copenhagen, it entered into an alliance with Napoleon, with the war leading to dire conditions and mass starvation in 1812. As the Danish Kingdom found itself on the losing side in 1814, it was forced, under terms of the Treaty of Kiel, to cede Norway to the King of Sweden while the old Norwegian provinces of Iceland, Greenland, and the Faroe Islands remained with the Danish crown. Norway took this opportunity to declare independence, adopted a constitution based on American and French models, 
and elected the Crown Prince of Denmark and Norway, Christian Frederick, as king on May 17, 1814. This is the famous site and my holiday celebrated by Norwegians and Norwegian Americans alike. Site and my is also called Norwegian Constitution Day. Norwegian opposition to the Great Powers' decision to link Norway with Sweden caused the Norwegian-Swedish war to break out as Sweden tried to subdue Norway by military means. As Sweden's military was not strong enough to defeat the Norwegian forces outright, and Norway's treasury was not large enough to support a protracted war, and as British and Russian navies blockaded the Norwegian coast, the belligerents were forced to negotiate the Convention of Moss. According to the terms of the Convention, Christian Frederick abdicated the Norwegian throne and authorized the Parliament of Norway to make the necessary constitutional amendments to allow for the personal union that Norway was forced to accept. On November 4, 1814, the Parliament elected Charles XIII of Sweden as King of Norway thereby establishing the union with Sweden. Under this arrangement, Norway kept its liberal constitution and its own independent institutions, except for the foreign service. Following the recession caused by the Napoleonic Wars, economic development of Norway remained slow until economic growth began around 1830. This period also saw the rise of the Norwegian Romantic nationalism, as Norwegians sought to define and express a distinct national character. The movement covered all branches of culture, including literature, Jernst Jern Jernson, Peter Christen Asp Jernson, Jergen Mo, painting, Adolf Tied Mand, music, and even language policy where attempts to define a native written language for Norway led to today's two official written forms for Norwegian, Bukmal and Nynorsk. King Charles III John, who came to the throne of Norway and Sweden in 1818, was the second king following Norway's break from Denmark and the union with Sweden. Charles John was a complex man whose long reign extended to 1844. He protected the constitution and liberties of Norway and Sweden during the age of Metternich. As such, he was regarded as a liberal monarch for that age. However, he was ruthless in his use of paid informers, the secret police and restrictions on the freedom of the press to put down public movements for reform especially the Norwegian National Independence Movement. The Romantic era that followed the reign of King Charles III John brought some significant social and political reforms. In 1854, women won the right to inherit property in their own right, just like men. In 1863, the last trace of keeping unmarried women in the status of minors was removed. Furthermore, women were then eligible for different occupations, particularly the common school teacher. By mid-century, Norway's democracy was limited by modern standards, voting was limited to officials, property owners, leaseholders, and burghers of incorporated towns. Still, Norway remained a conservative society. Life in Norway was dominated by the aristocracy of professional men who filled most of the important posts in the central government. There was no strong bourgeoisie class in Norway to demand a breakdown of this aristocratic control of the economy. Thus, even while revolution swept over most of the countries of Europe in 1848, Norway was largely unaffected by revolts that year. Marcus Thrain was a utopian socialist. He made his appeal to the laboring classes urging a change of social structure from below upwards. In 1848, he organized a labor society in Drammen. In just a few months, 
this society had a membership of 500 and was publishing its own newspaper. Within two years, 300 societies had been organized all over Norway, with a total membership of 20,000 persons. The membership was drawn from the lower classes of both urban and rural areas, for the first time these two groups felt they had a common cause. In the end, the revolt was easily crushed, Thrain was captured and in 1855, after four years in jail, was sentenced to three additional years for crimes against the safety of the state. Upon his release, Marcus Thrain attempted unsuccessfully to revitalize his movement, but after the death of his wife, he migrated to the United States. In 1898, all men were granted universal suffrage, followed by all women in 1913. Christian Mikkelsen, a shipping magnate and statesman, and Prime Minister of Norway from 1905 to 1907, played a central role in the peaceful separation of Norway from Sweden on June 7, 1905. A national referendum confirmed the people's preference for a monarchy over a republic. No Norwegian could legitimately claim the throne because none was able to prove relationship to medieval royalty and in European tradition royal or blue blood is a precondition for laying claim to the throne. The government offered the throne of Norway to a prince of the Dano-German royal house of Schleswig-Holstein Sonderberg Glucksburg. Prince Karl of Denmark was unanimously elected king by the Norwegian parliament the first king of a fully independent Norway in 508 years, he took the name Haakon VII. In 1905, the country welcomed the prince from neighbouring Denmark, his wife Maud of Wales and their young son to re-establish Norway's royal house. Following centuries of close ties between Norway and Denmark, a prince from the latter was the obvious choice for a European prince who could best relate to the Norwegian people. Throughout the First World War, Norway was in principle a neutral country. In reality, however, Norway had been pressured by the British to hand over increasingly large parts of its large merchant fleet to the British at low rates, as well as to join the trade blockade against Germany. Norwegian merchant marine ships, often with Norwegian sailors still on board, were then sailing under the British flag and at risk of being sunk by German submarines. Thus, many Norwegian sailors and ships were lost. Thereafter, the world ranking of the Norwegian merchant navy fell from fourth place to sixth in the world. Norway also proclaimed its neutrality during the Second World War, but despite this, it was invaded by German forces on April 9, 1940. Although Norway was unprepared for the German surprise attack, military and naval resistance lasted for two months. Norwegian armed forces in the north launched an offensive against the German forces in the battles of Narvik until they were forced to surrender on June 10 after losing British support which had been diverted to France during the German invasion of France. King Haakon and the Norwegian government escaped to Rotherhith in London. Throughout the war they sent inspirational radio speeches and supported clandestine military actions in Norway against the Germans. On the day of the invasion, the leader of the small National Socialist Party Nas Jonal Samling, Viedkin Quisling, tried to seize power, but was forced by the German occupiers to step aside. Real power was wielded by the leader of the German Occupation Authority, Reichskommissar Joseph Turboven. Quisling, as minister-president, later formed a collaborationist government under German control. Up to 15,000 Norwegians volunteered to fight in German units, including the Waffen-SS. The fraction of the Norwegian population that supported Germany was traditionally smaller than in Sweden, 
but greater than is generally appreciated today. It included a number of prominent personalities such as Nut Homsen. The concept of a Germanic union of member states fit well into their thoroughly nationalist patriotic ideology. Many Norwegians and persons of Norwegian descent joined the Allied forces as well as the Free Norwegian forces. In June 1940, a small group had left Norway following their king to Britain. This group included 13 ships, 5 aircraft, and 500 men from the Royal Norwegian Navy. By the end of the war, the force had grown to 58 ships and 7,500 men in service in the Royal Norwegian Navy, 5 squadrons of aircraft in the newly formed Norwegian Air Force, and land forces including the Norwegian Independent Company 1 and 5 troop as well as No. 10 commandos. During the five years of German occupation, Norwegians built a resistance movement which fought the German occupation forces with both civil disobedience and armed resistance including the destruction of Norsk Hydro S heavy water plant and stockpile of heavy water at Vemork, which crippled the German nuclear program. More important to the Allied war effort, however, was the role of the Norwegian merchant marine. At the time of the invasion, Norway had the fourth largest merchant marine fleet in the world. It was led by the Norwegian shipping company Nortraship under the Allies throughout the war and took part in every war operation from the evacuation of Dunkirk to the Normandy landings. Each December Norway gives a Christmas tree to the United Kingdom as thanks for the British assistance during the Second World War. A ceremony takes place to erect the tree in London's Trafalgar Square. From 1945 to 1962, the Labour Party held an absolute majority in the Parliament. The government, led by Prime Minister Einar Gerhardsen, embarked on a program inspired by Keynesian economics, emphasizing state-financed industrialization and cooperation between trade unions and employers' organizations. Many measures of state control of the economy imposed during the war were continued, although the rationing of dairy products was lifted in 1949 while price control and rationing of housing and cars continued as long as until 1960. The wartime alliance with the United Kingdom and the United States was continued in the post-war years. Although pursuing the goal of a socialist economy, the Labour Party distanced itself from the Communists, and strengthened its foreign policy and defence policy ties with the US. Norway received Marshall Plan aid from the United States starting in 1947, joined the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development one year later, and became a founding member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in 1949. The first oil was discovered at the small Balder Field in 1967, production only began in 1999. In 1969, the Phillips Petroleum Company discovered petroleum resources at the Ekofisk field west of Norway. In 1973, the Norwegian government founded the state oil company, Statoil. Oil production did not provide net income until the early 1980s because of the large capital investment that was required to establish the country's petroleum industry. Around 1975, both the proportion and absolute number of workers in industry peaked. Since then labor-intensive industries and services like factory mass production and shipping have largely been outsourced. Norway was a founding member of the European Free Trade Association. Norway was twice invited to join the European Union but ultimately declined to join after referendums which failed by narrow margins in 1972 and 1994. In 1981, 
a conservative government led by Keir Willock replaced the Labour Party with a policy of stimulating the stag-flat economy with tax cuts, economic liberalisation, deregulation of markets, and measures to curb record high inflation. Norway's first female Prime Minister, G.R.O. Harlem Brundtland of the Labour Party, continued many of the reforms of her conservative predecessor, while backing traditional labour concerns such as social security, high taxes, the industrialization of nature, and feminism. By the late 1990s, Norway had paid off its foreign debt and had started accumulating a sovereign wealth fund. Since the 1990s, a divisive question in politics has been how much of the income from petroleum production the government should spend, and how much it should save. In 2011, Norway suffered two terrorist attacks on the same day conducted by Anders Bering Breivik which struck the government quarter in Oslo and a summer camp of the Labour Party's youth movement at Utia Island resulting in 77 deaths and 319 wounded. The 2013 Norwegian parliamentary election brought a more conservative government to power, with the Conservative Party and the Progress Party winning 43% of the electorate's votes. Norway comprises the western part of Scandinavia in northern Europe. The rugged coastline, broken by huge fjords and thousands of islands, stretches 25,000 kilometers and 83,000 kilometers. Norway shares a 1,619 kilometer land border with Sweden, 727 kilometers with Finland, and 196 kilometers with Russia to the east. To the north, west and south, Norway is bordered by the Barents Sea, the Norwegian Sea, the North Sea, and Skagerrak. The Scandinavian mountains form much of the border with Sweden. At 385,252 square kilometers without, much of the country is dominated by mountainous or high terrain, with a great variety of natural features caused by prehistoric glaciers and varied topography. The most noticeable of these are the fjords, deep grooves cut into the land flooded by the sea following the end of the Ice Age. Sognefjorden is the world's second deepest fjord, and the world's longest at 204 kilometers. Hornindalisvatnet is the deepest lake in all Europe. Permafrost can be found all year in the higher mountain areas and in the interior of Finnmark County. Numerous glaciers are found in Norway. Norway lies between latitudes 57 degrees and 81 degrees north, and longitudes 4 degrees and 32 degrees east. The land is mostly made of hard granite and nice rock, but slate, sandstone, and limestone are also common and the lowest elevations contain marine deposits. Because of the Gulf Stream and prevailing westerlies, Norway experiences higher temperatures and more precipitation than expected at such northern latitudes, especially along the coast. The mainland experiences four distinct seasons, with colder winters and less precipitation inland. The northernmost part has a mostly maritime subarctic climate, while Svalbard has an arctic tundra climate. Because of the large latitudinal range of the country and the varied topography and climate, Norway has a larger number of different habitats than almost any other European country. There are approximately 60,000 species in Norway and adjacent waters. The Norwegian Shelf Large Marine Ecosystem is considered highly productive. The southern and western parts of Norway, fully exposed to Atlantic storm fronts, experience more precipitation and have milder winters than the eastern and far northern parts. Areas to the east of the coastal mountains are in a rain shadow, and have lower rain and snow totals than the west. 
The lowlands around Oslo have the warmest and sunniest summers, but also cold weather and snow in wintertime. Because of Norway's high latitude, there are large seasonal variations in daylight. From late May to late July, the sun never completely descends beneath the horizon in areas north of the Arctic Circle, and the rest of the country experiences up to 20 hours of daylight per day. Conversely, from late November to late January, the sun never rises above the horizon in the north, and daylight hours are very short in the rest of the country. The coastal climate of Norway is exceptionally mild compared with areas on similar latitudes elsewhere in the world, with the Gulf Stream passing directly offshore the northern areas of the Atlantic coast, continuously warming the region in the winter. Temperature anomalies found in coastal locations are exceptional, with RST and VRY lacking a meteorological winter in spite of being north of the Arctic Circle. The Gulf Stream has this effect only on the northern parts of Norway, not in the south, despite what is commonly believed. The northern coast of Norway would thus be ice covered if not for the Gulf Stream. As a side effect, the Scandinavian mountains prevent continental winds from reaching the coastline, causing very cool summers throughout Atlantic Norway. Oslo has more of a continental climate, similar to Sweden's. The mountain ranges have subarctic and tundra climates. There is also very high rainfall in areas exposed to the Atlantic, such as Bergen. Oslo, in comparison, is dry, being in a rain shadow. Skjak in a planned county is also in the rain shadow and is one of the driest places with 278 mm precipitation annually. Finnmarksvita and the interior valleys of Troms and Nordland also receive less than 300 mm annually. Longyearbyen is the driest place in Norway with 190 mm. Parts of southeastern Norway including parts of Mjesa have warm summer humid continental climates, while the more southern and western coasts are mostly of the oceanic climate. Further inland in southeastern and northern Norway, the subarctic climate dominates, this is especially true for areas in the rain shadow of the Scandinavian mountains. Some of the inner valleys of a planned get so little precipitation annually, thanks to the rain shadow effect, that they meet the requirements for dry summer subarctic climates. In higher altitudes, close to the coasts of southern and western Norway, one can find the rare subpolar oceanic climate. This climate is also common in northern Norway, but they're usually in lower altitudes all the way down to sea level. A small part of the northernmost coast of Norway has the tundra-slash-alpine-slash-polar climate. Large parts of Norway are covered by mountains and high-altitude plateaus, many of which also exhibit the tundra-slash-alpine-slash-polar climate. The total number of species include 16,000 species of insects. 20,000 species of algae, 1,800 species of lichen, 1,050 species of mosses, 2,800 species of vascular plants, up to 7,000 species of fungi, 450 species of birds, 90 species of mammals, 45 freshwater species of fish, 150 saltwater species of fish. 1,000 species of freshwater invertebrates, and 3,500 species of saltwater invertebrates. About 40,000 of these species have been described by science. The Red List of 2010 encompasses 4,599 species. 17 species are listed mainly because they are endangered on a global scale such as the European beaver, even if the population in Norway is not seen as endangered. 
the number of threatened and near threatened species equals to 3,682, it includes 418 fungi species, many of which are closely associated with the small remaining areas of old growth forests, 36 bird species, and 16 species of mammals. In 2010, 2,398 species were listed as endangered or vulnerable, of these were 1,250 listed as vulnerable, 871 as endangered, and 276 species as critically endangered, among which were the grey wolf, the arctic fox and the pool frog. The largest predator in Norwegian waters is the sperm whale, and the largest fish is the basking shark. The largest predator on land is the polar bear, while the brown bear is the largest predator on the Norwegian mainland. The largest land animal on the mainland is the elk. The elk in Norway is known for its size and strength and is often called Skogens Kanje, king of the forest. Attractive and dramatic scenery and landscape are found throughout Norway. The west coast of southern Norway and the coast of northern Norway present some of the most visually impressive coastal sceneries in the world. National Geographic has listed the Norwegian fjords as the world's top tourist attraction. The country is also home to the natural phenomena of the midnight sun, as well as the aurora borealis known also as the northern lights. The 2016 Environmental Performance Index from Yale University, Columbia University and the World Economic Forum put Norway in 17th place, immediately below Croatia and Switzerland. The index is based on environmental risks to human health, habitat loss and changes in CO2 emissions. The index notes over-exploitation of fisheries, but not Norway's whaling or oil exports. Norway is considered to be one of the most developed democracies and states of justice in the world. From 1814, c 45% of men had the right to vote, whereas the United Kingdom had c 20%, Sweden c 5%, and Belgium C 1.15%. Since 2010, Norway has been classified as the world's most democratic country by the Democracy Index. According to the Constitution of Norway, which was adopted on May 17, 1814 and inspired by the United States Declaration of Independence and French Revolution of 1776 and 1789, respectively, Norway is a unitary constitutional monarchy with a parliamentary system of government, wherein the King of Norway is the head of state and the Prime Minister is the head of government. Power is separated among the legislative, executive and judicial branches of government, as defined by the Constitution, which serves as the country's supreme legal document. The monarch officially retains executive power. However, following the introduction of a parliamentary system of government, the duties of the monarch have since become strictly representative and ceremonial such as the formal appointment and dismissal of the Prime Minister and other ministers in the executive government. Accordingly, the monarch is Commander-in-Chief of the Norwegian Armed Forces, and serves as Chief Diplomatic Official abroad and as a symbol of unity. Harald V of the House of Schleswig-Holstein Sonderberg Glucksberg was crowned King of Norway in 1991, the first since the 14th century who has been born in the country. Haakon, Crown Prince of Norway, is the legal and rightful heir to the throne and the kingdom. In practice, the Prime Minister exercises the executive powers. Constitutionally, legislative power is vested with both the government and the Parliament of Norway but the latter is the supreme legislature and a unicameral body. 
Norway is fundamentally structured as a representative democracy. The parliament can pass a law by simple majority of the 169 representatives, who are elected on the basis of proportional representation from 19 constituencies for four-year terms. 150 are elected directly from the 19 constituencies, and an additional 19 seats are allocated on a nationwide basis to make the representation in Parliament correspond better with the popular vote for the political parties. A 4% election threshold is required for a party to gain levelling seats in Parliament. There are a total of 169 members of Parliament. The Parliament of Norway, called the Stortinget, ratifies national treaties developed by the executive branch. It can impeach members of the government if their acts are declared unconstitutional. If an indicted suspect is impeached, Parliament has the power to remove the person from office. The position of Prime Minister, Norway's head of government, is allocated to the Member of Parliament who can obtain the confidence of a majority in Parliament, usually the current leader of the largest political party or, more effectively, through a coalition of parties. A single party generally does not have sufficient political power in terms of the number of seats to form a government on its own. Norway has often been ruled by minority governments. The Prime Minister nominates the Cabinet, traditionally drawn from members of the same political party or parties in the Storting, making up the government. The PM organises the executive government and exercises its power as vested by the Constitution. Norway has a state church, the Lutheran Church of Norway, which has in recent years gradually been granted more internal autonomy in day-to-day -day affairs but which still has a special constitutional status. Formerly, the PM had to have more than half the members of cabinet be members of the Church of Norway, meaning at least 10 out of the 19 ministries. This rule was however removed in 2012. The issue of separation of church and state in Norway has been increasingly controversial, as many people believe it is time to change this to reflect the growing diversity in the population. A part of this is the evolution of the public school subject Christianity, a required subject since 1739. Even the state's loss in a battle at the European Court of Human Rights at Strasbourg in 2007 did not settle the matter. As of January 1, 2017, the Church of Norway is a separate legal entity, and no longer a branch of the civil service. Through the Council of State, a privy council presided over by the monarch, the Prime Minister and the Cabinet meet at the Royal Palace and formally consult the monarch. All government bills need the formal approval by the monarch before and after introduction to Parliament. The Council reviews and approves all of the monarch's actions as head of state. Although all government and parliamentary acts are decided beforehand, the Privy Council is an example of symbolic gesture the King retains. Members of the Storting are directly elected from party lists proportional representation in 19 plural member constituencies in a national multi-party system. Historically. Both the Norwegian Labour Party and Conservative Party have played leading political roles. In the early 21st century, the Labour Party has been in power since the 2005 election, in a red-green coalition with the Socialist Left Party and the Centre Party. Since 2005, both the Conservative Party and the Progress Party have won numerous seats in the Parliament but not sufficient in the 2009 general election to overthrow the coalition. Commentators have pointed to the poor cooperation between the opposition parties, including the Liberals and the Christian Democrats. Jens Stoltenberg, the leader of the Labour Party, 
continues to have the necessary majority through his multi-party alliance to continue as PM. In national elections in September 2013, voters ended eight years of labor rule. Two political parties, Higher and Fremskrits Partiet, elected on promises of tax cuts, more spending on infrastructure and education, better services and stricter rules on immigration, formed a government. Coming at a time when Norway's economy is in good condition with low unemployment, the rise of the right appeared to be based on other issues. Ernest Solberg became Prime Minister, the second female Prime Minister after Brundtland and the first Conservative Prime Minister since CIS. Solberg said her win was a historic election victory for the right-wing parties. Norway, a unitary state is divided into 18 first-level administrative counties. The counties are administrated through directly elected county assemblies who elect the county governor. Additionally, the king and government are represented in every county by a Filkas man, who effectively acts as a governor. As such, the government is directly represented at a local level through the county governor's offices. The counties are then subdivided into 422 second-level municipalities, which in turn are administrated by directly elected municipal council, headed by a mayor and a small executive cabinet. The capital of Oslo is considered both a county and a municipality. Norway has two integral overseas territories, Jan Mayen and Svalbard the only developed island in the archipelago of the same name, located miles away to the north. There are three Antarctic and sub-Antarctic dependencies, Bouvet Island, Peter I Island, and Queen Maud Land. On most maps, there had been an unclaimed area between Queen Maud Land and the South Pole until June 12, 2015 when Norway formally annexed that area. 96 settlements have city status in Norway. In most cases, the city borders are coterminous with the borders of their respective municipalities. Often, Norwegian city municipalities include large areas that are not developed, for example, Oslo municipality contains large forests, located north and southeast of the city and over half of Bergen municipality consists of mountainous areas. The counties of Norway are Norway uses a civil law system where laws are created and amended in Parliament and the system regulated through the Courts of Justice of Norway. It consists of the Supreme Court of 20 permanent judges and a Chief Justice, Appellate Courts, City and District Courts, and conciliation councils. The judiciary is independent of executive and legislative branches. While the Prime Minister nominates Supreme Court justices for office, their nomination must be approved by Parliament and formally confirmed by the monarch in the Council of State. Usually, judges attached to regular courts are formally appointed by the monarch on the advice of the Prime Minister. The court's strict and formal mission is to regulate the Norwegian judicial system, interpret the constitution, and as such implement the legislation adopted by parliament. In its judicial reviews, it monitors the legislative and executive branches to ensure that they comply with provisions of enacted legislation. The law is enforced in Norway by the Norwegian Police Service. It is a unified national police service made up of 27 police districts and several specialist agencies, such as Norwegian National Authority for the Investigation and Prosecution of Economic and Environmental Crime, known as COCRIM, and the National Criminal Investigation Service, known as CRIPOS, each headed by a chief of police. The police service is headed by the National Police Directorate which reports to the Ministry of Justice and the police. 
The police directorate is headed by a national police commissioner. The only exception is the Norwegian Police Security Agency, whose head answers directly to the Ministry of Justice and the police. Norway abolished the death penalty for regular criminal acts in 1902. The legislature abolished the death penalty for high treason in war and war crimes in 1979. Reporters Without Borders in its 2007 Worldwide Press Freedom Index, ranked Norway at a shared first place out of 169 countries. In general, the legal and institutional framework in Norway is characterized by a high degree of transparency, accountability and integrity, and the perception and the occurrence of corruption are very low. Norway has ratified all relevant international anti-corruption conventions, and its standards of implementation and enforcement of anti-corruption legislation are considered very high by many international anti-corruption working groups such as the OECD Anti-Bribery Working Group. However, there are some isolated cases showing that some municipalities have abused their position in public procurement processes. Norwegian prisons are humane, rather than tough, with emphasis on rehabilitation. At 20%, Norway's reconviction rate is among the lowest in the world. Norway maintains embassies in 82 countries. 60 countries maintain an embassy in Norway, all of them in the capital, Oslo. Norway is a founding member of the United Nations the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Council of Europe and the European Free Trade Association. Norway issued applications for accession to the European Union and its predecessors in 1962, 1967 and 1992, respectively. While Denmark, Sweden and Finland obtained membership, the Norwegian electorate rejected the treaties of accession in referenda in 1972 and 1994. After the 1994 referendum, Norway maintained its membership in the European Economic Area, an arrangement granting the country access to the internal market of the Union, on the condition that Norway implements the Union's pieces of legislation which are deemed relevant successive Norwegian governments have, since 1994, requested participation in parts of the EU's cooperation that go beyond the provisions of the EEA agreement. Non-voting participation by Norway has been granted in, for instance, the Union's Common Security and Defence Policy, the Schengen Agreement, and the European Defence Agency, as well as 19 separate programmes. Norway contributes to international development. In addition, it participated in the 1990s brokering of the Oslo Accords, an attempt to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. These were unsuccessful. The Norwegian Armed Forces numbers about 25,000 personnel, including civilian employees. According to 2009 mobilization plans, full mobilization produces approximately 83,000 combatant personnel. Norway has conscription. In 2013, the country became the first in Europe and NATO to draft women as well as men. However, due to less need for conscripts after the Cold War ended with the breakup of the Soviet Union, few people have to serve if they are not motivated. The armed forces are subordinate to the Norwegian Ministry of Defence. The commander-in-chief is King Harald V. The military of Norway is divided into the following branches, the Norwegian Army, the Royal Norwegian Navy, the Royal Norwegian Air Force, the Norwegian Cyber Defence Force and the Home Guard. In response to its being overrun by Germany in 1940, the country was one of the founding nations of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization on April 4, 1949. 
At present, Norway contributes in the International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan. Additionally, Norway has contributed in several missions in contexts of the United Nations, NATO and the common security and defence policy of the European Union. Norway was awarded first place according to the UN's Human Development Index for 2013. In the 1800s, by contrast, poverty and communicable diseases dominated in Norway together with famines and epidemics. From the 1900s, improvements in public health occurred as a result of development in several areas such as social and living conditions, changes in disease and medical outbreaks, establishment of the health care system, and emphasis on public health matters. Vaccination and increased treatment opportunities with antibiotics resulted in great improvements within the Norwegian population. Improved hygiene and better nutrition were factors that contributed to improved health. The disease pattern in Norway changed from communicable diseases to non-communicable diseases and chronic diseases as cardiovascular disease. Inequalities and social differences are still present in public health in Norway today. In 2013 the infant mortality rate was 2.5 per 1,000 live births among children under the age of 1. For girls it was 2.7 and for boys 2.3, which is the lowest infant mortality rate for boys ever recorded in Norway. Norwegians enjoy the second highest GDP per capita among European countries and the sixth highest GDP per capita in the world. Today, Norway ranks as the second wealthiest country in the world in monetary value, with the largest capital reserve per capita of any nation. According to the CIA World Factbook, Norway is a net external creditor of debt. Norway maintained first place in the world in the UNDP Human Development Index for six consecutive years, and then reclaimed this position in 2009 through 2015. The standard of living in Norway is among the highest in the world. Foreign Policy magazine ranks Norway last in its failed states index for 2009, judging Norway to be the world's most well-functioning and stable country. The OECD ranks Norway fourth in the 2013 Equalized Better Life Index and third in Intergenerational Earnings Elasticity. The Norwegian economy is an example of a mixed economy, a prosperous capitalist welfare state and social democracy country featuring a combination of free market activity and large state ownership in certain key sectors. Public health care in Norway is free, and parents have 46 weeks paid parental leave. The state income derived from natural resources includes a significant contribution from petroleum production. Norway has an unemployment rate of 4.8%, with 68% of the population aged 1574 employed. People in the labor force are either employed or looking for work. 9.5% of the population aged 1866 receive a disability pension and 30% of the labor force are employed by the government, the highest in the OECD. The hourly productivity levels, as well as average hourly wages in Norway, are among the highest in the world. The egalitarian values of Norwegian society have kept the wage difference between the lowest paid worker and the CEO of most companies as much less than in comparable Western economies. This is also evident in Norway's low Gini coefficient. The state has large ownership positions in key industrial sectors, such as the strategic petroleum sector, hydroelectric energy production, aluminium production, the largest Norwegian bank, and telecommunication provider. Through these big companies, the government controls approximately 30% of the stock values at the Oslo Stock Exchange. 
When non-listed companies are included, the state has even higher share in ownership. Norway is a major shipping nation and has the world's sixth largest merchant fleet, with 1,412 Norwegian-owned merchant vessels. By referendums in 1972 and 1994, Norwegians rejected proposals to join the European Union. However, Norway, together with Iceland and Liechtenstein, participates in the European Union's single market through the European Economic Area Agreement. The EEA Treaty between the European Union countries and the EFTA countries transposed into Norwegian law via ES Leuven describes the procedures for implementing European Union rules in Norway and the other EFTA countries. Norway is a highly integrated member of most sectors of the EU internal market. Some sectors, such as agriculture, oil, and fish, are not wholly covered by the EEA Treaty. Norway has also acceded to the Schengen Agreement and several other intergovernmental agreements among the EU member states. The country is richly endowed with natural resources including petroleum, hydropower, fish, forests, and minerals. Large reserves of petroleum and natural gas were discovered in the 1960s, which led to a boom in the economy. Norway has obtained one of the highest standards of living in the world in part by having a large amount of natural resources compared to the size of the population. In 2011, 28% of state revenues were generated from the petroleum industry. Norway is the first country which banned cutting of trees, in order to prevent rainforests from vanishing. The country declared its intention at the UN Climate Summit in 2014, alongside Great Britain and Germany. Crops, that are typically linked to forests destruction are timber, soy, palm oil, and beef. Now Norway has to find new way to provide these essential products without exerting negative influence on its environment. Export revenues from oil and gas have risen to almost 50% of total exports and constitute more than 20% of the GDP. Norway is the fifth largest oil exporter and third largest gas exporter in the world, but it is not a member of OPEC. In 1995, the Norwegian government established the Sovereign Wealth Fund, which would be funded with oil revenues, including taxes, dividends, sales revenues, and licensing fees. This was intended to reduce overheating in the economy from oil revenues, minimize uncertainty from volatility in oil price, and provide a cushion to compensate for expenses associated with the aging of the population. The government controls its petroleum resources through a combination of state ownership in major operators in the oil fields and the fully state-owned Petoro, which has a market value of about twice Statoil, and SDFI. Finally, the government controls licensing of exploration and production of fields. The fund invests in developed financial markets outside Norway. The budgetary rule is to spend no more than 4% of the fund each year. In March 2017, the government pension fund controlled assets were valued at approximately 913 billion US dollars, which is about 178% of Norway's current GDP. It is the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world. The fund controls about 1.3% of all listed shares in Europe, and more than 1% of all the publicly traded shares in the world. The Norwegian Central Bank operates investment offices in London, New York, and Shanghai. Guidelines implemented in 2007 allow the fund to invest up to 60% of the capital and shares while the rest may be placed in bonds and real estate. As the stock markets tumbled in September 2008, the fund was able to buy more shares at low prices. 
In this way, the losses incurred by the market turmoil was recuperated by November 2009. Other nations with economies based on natural resources, such as Russia, are trying to learn from Norway by establishing similar funds. The investment choices of the Norwegian fund are directed by ethical guidelines, for example, the fund is not allowed to invest in companies that produce parts for nuclear weapons. Norway's highly transparent investment scheme is lauded by the international community. The future size of the fund is closely linked to the price of oil and to developments in international financial markets. In 2000, the government sold one-third of the state-owned oil company Statoil in an IPO. The next year, the main telecom supplier, Telenor, was listed on Oslo Stock Exchange. The state also owns significant shares of Norway's largest bank, DNB, NOR and the airline SAS. Since 2000, economic growth has been rapid, pushing unemployment down to levels not seen since the early 1980s. The international financial crisis has primarily affected the industrial sector, but unemployment has remained low, and was at 3.3% in August 2011. In contrast to Norway, Sweden had substantially higher actual and projected unemployment numbers as a result of the recession. Thousands of mainly young Swedes migrated to Norway for work during these years, which is easy, as the labor market and social security systems overlap in the Nordic countries. In the first quarter of 2009, the GNP of Norway surpassed Sweden's for the first time in history, although its population is half the size. Norway contains significant mineral resources, and in 2013, its mineral production was valued at 1.5 billion US dollars. The most valuable minerals are calcium carbonate, building stone, nepheline cyanide, olivine, iron, titanium, and nickel. Norway is also the world's second largest exporter of fish. Hydroelectric plants generate roughly 98-99% of Norway's electric power, more than any other country in the world. Between 1966 and 2013, Norwegian companies drilled 5085 oil wells mostly Indiana the North Sea. Of these 3,672 are Utvikalingsbrunner. 1,413 are Ledeborner, and 1,405 have been terminated. Oil fields not yet in production phase include, Wisting Central calculated size in 2013, 65,156 million barrels of oil and 10 to 40 billion cubic feet, of gas and the Kastberg oil field calculated size 540 million barrels of oil, and 2 to 7 billion cubic feet of gas. Both oil fields are located in the Barents Sea. Due to the low population density, narrow shape, and long coastlines of Norway, its public transport is less developed than in many European countries, especially outside the major cities. The country has long-standing water transport traditions, but the Norwegian Ministry of Transport and Communications has in recent years implemented rail, road and air transport through numerous subsidiaries to develop the country's infrastructure. Under discussion is development of a new high-speed rail system between the nation's largest cities. Norway's main railway network consists of 4,114 km of standard gauge lines, of which 242 km is double track and 64 km high speed rail while 62% is electrified at 15 kV 16 to 3 Hz AC. 
the railways transported 56,827,000 passengers, 2,956,000 passenger kilometers, and 24,783,000 tons of cargo, 3,414 million ton kilometers. The entire network is owned by the Norwegian National Rail Administration. All domestic passenger trains except the Airport Express train are operated by Norges Statsbaner. Several companies operate freight trains. Investment in new infrastructure and maintenance is financed through the state budget, and subsidies are provided for passenger train operations. NSB operates long-haul trains, including night trains, regional services, and four commuter train systems, around Oslo, Trondheim, Bergen and Stavanger. Norway has approximately 92,946 kilometers of road network, of which 72,033 kilometers are paved and 664 kilometers are motorway. The four tiers of road routes are national, county, municipal and private, with national and primary county roads numbered en route. The most important national routes are part of the European route scheme. The two most prominent are the E6 going north-south through the entire country, and the E39, which follows the west coast. National and county roads are managed by the Norwegian Public Roads Administration. Norway has the world's largest registered stock of plug-in electric vehicles per capita. In March 2014, Norway became the first country where over one in every 100 passenger cars on the roads is a plug-in electric. The plug-in electric segment market share of new car sales is also the highest in the world. According to a report by Dagens Neringsliv in June 2016, the country would like to ban all gasoline and diesel-powered vehicles as early as 2025. In June 2017, 42% of new cars registered were electric. Of the 97 airports in Norway, 52 are public, and 46 are operated by the state-owned Avinor. Seven airports have more than 1 million passengers annually. A total of 41,089,675 passengers passed through Norwegian airports in 2007 of whom 13,397,458 were international. The central gateway to Norway by air is Oslo Airport, Gardermoen. Located about 35 kilometers northeast of Oslo, it is hub for the two major Norwegian airlines, Scandinavian Airlines and Norwegian Air Shuttle, and for regional aircraft from western Norway. There are departures to most European countries and some intercontinental destinations. A direct high-speed train connects to Oslo Central Station every 10 minutes for a 20 minutes ride. Norway's population was 5,096,300 people in October 2013. Norwegians are an ethnic North Germanic people. Since the late 20th century, Norway has attracted immigrants from Southern and Central Europe, the Mideast, Africa, Asia, and beyond. In 2012, an official study showed that 86% of the total population have at least one parent who was born in Norway. More than 710,000 individuals are immigrants and their descendants, there are 117,000 children of immigrants born in Norway. Of these 710,000 immigrants and their descendants. In 2013, the Norwegian government said that 14% of the Norwegian population were immigrants or children of two immigrant parents. About 6% of the immigrant population come from EU, North America, and Australia 
and about 8.1% come from Asia, Africa, and Latin America. In 2012, of the total 660,000 with immigrant background, 407,262 had Norwegian citizenship. Immigrants have settled in all Norwegian municipalities. The cities or municipalities with the highest share of immigrants in 2012 were Oslo and Drammen. The share in Stavanger was 16%. According to Reuters, Oslo is the fastest growing city in Europe because of increased immigration. In recent years, immigration has accounted for most of Norway's population growth. In 2011, 16% of newborn children were of immigrant background. The Sami people are indigenous to the far north and have traditionally inhabited central and northern parts of Norway and Sweden as well as areas in northern Finland and in Russia on the Kola Peninsula. Another national minority are the Kvan people, descendants of Finnish-speaking people who migrated to northern Norway from the 18th up to the 20th century. From the 19th century up to the 1970s, the Norwegian government tried to assimilate both the Sami and the Kvan encouraging them to adopt the majority language, culture, and religion. Because of this Norwegianization process, many families of Sami or Kvan ancestry now identify as ethnic Norwegian. Particularly in the 19th century, when economic conditions were difficult in Norway, tens of thousands of people migrated to the United States and Canada where they could work and buy land in frontier areas. Many went to the Midwest and Pacific Northwest. In 2006, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, almost 4.7 million persons identified as Norwegian Americans, which was larger than the population of ethnic Norwegians in Norway itself. In the 2011 Canadian Census, 452,705 Canadian citizens identified as having Norwegian ancestry. On January 1, 2013, the number of immigrants or children of two immigrants residing in Norway was 710,465, or 14.1% of the total population up from 183,000 in 1992. Yearly immigration has increased since 2005. While yearly net immigration in 2001-2005 was on average 13,613, it increased to 37,541 between 2006 and 2010 and in 2011 net immigration reached 47,032. This is mostly because of increased immigration by residents of the EU, in particular from Poland. In 2012, the immigrant community grew by 55,300, a record high. Net immigration from abroad reached 47,300 while immigration accounted for 72% of Norway's population growth. 17% of newborn children were born to immigrant parents. Children of Pakistani, Somali and Vietnamese parents made up the largest groups of all Norwegians born to immigrant parents. Pakistani Norwegians are the largest non-European minority group in Norway. Most of their 32,700 members live in and around Oslo. The Iraqi and Somali immigrant populations have increased significantly in recent years. After the enlargement of the EU in 2004, a wave of immigrants has arrived from Central and Northern Europe, particularly Poland, Sweden and Lithuania. The fastest growing immigrant groups in 2011 in absolute numbers were from Poland, Lithuania, and Sweden. 
The policies of immigration and integration have been the subject of much debate in Norway. Largest Immigrant Groups Most Norwegians are registered at baptism as members of the Church of Norway, which has been Norway's state church since its establishment. In recent years the church has been granted increasing internal autonomy, but it retains its special constitutional status and other special ties to the state, and the constitution requires that the reigning monarch must be a member and states that the country's values are based on its Christian and humanist heritage. Many remain in the church to participate in the community and practices such as baptism, confirmation, marriage, and burial rites. About 71.5% of Norwegians were members of the Church of Norway in 2016. In 2016, about 55.3% of all newborns were baptized and about 60.0% of all 15-year-old persons were confirmed in the church. In the early 1990s, studies estimated that between 4.7% and 5.3% of Norwegians attended church on a weekly basis. This figure has dropped to about 2%. In 2010, 10% of the population was religiously unaffiliated, while another 9% were members of religious communities outside the Church of Norway. Other Christian denominations total about 4.9% of the population, the largest of which is the Roman Catholic Church, with 83,000 members, according to 2009 government statistics. The Afton Post and in October 2012 reported there were about 115,234 registered Roman Catholics in Norway. The reporter estimated that the total number of people with a Roman Catholic background may be 170,000,000,000 or higher. Others include Pentecostals the Evangelical Lutheran Free Church of Norway, Methodists, Baptists, Eastern Orthodox, Brunstad Christian Church, Seventh-day Adventists, Assyrians and Chaldeans, and others. The Swedish, Finnish and Icelandic Lutheran congregations in Norway have about 27,500 members in total. Other Christian denominations comprise less than 1% each, including 4,000 members in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and 12,000 Jehovah's Witnesses. Among non-Christian religions, Islam is the largest, with 132,135 registered members, and probably fewer than 200,000 in total. It is practiced mainly by Somali, Arab, Bosniak, Albanian and Turkish immigrants, as well as Norwegians of Pakistani descent. Other religions comprise less than 1% each, including 819 adherents of Judaism. Indian immigrants introduced Hinduism to Norway which in 2011 has slightly more than 5,900 adherents, or 1% of non-Lutheran Norwegians. Sikhism has approximately 3,000 adherents, with most living in Oslo, which has two Gudwaras. Sikhs first came to Norway in the early 1970s. The troubles in Punjab after Operation Blue Star and riots committed against Sikhs in India after the assassination of Indira Gandhi led to an increase in Sikh refugees moving to Norway. Draman also has a sizable population of Sikhs, the largest Gudwara in North Europe was built in Lyre. There are 11 Buddhist organizations, grouped under the Buddhist Verbundet organization, with slightly over 14,000 members, which make up 0.2% of the population. The Baha'i religion has slightly more than 1,000 adherents. Around 1.7% of Norwegians belong to the Secular Norwegian Humanist Association. 
From 2006 to 2011, the fastest growing religious communities in Norway were Eastern Orthodox Christianity and Oriental Orthodox Christianity, which grew in membership by 80%. However, their share of the total population remains small, at 0.2%. It is associated with the huge immigration from Eritrea and Ethiopia, and to a lesser extent from Central and Eastern European and Middle Eastern countries. Other fast-growing religions were the Roman Catholic Church, Hinduism, Islam and Buddhism. As in other Scandinavian countries, the ancient Norse followed a form of native Germanic paganism known as Norse paganism. By the end of the 11th century, when Norway had been Christianized, the indigenous Norse religion and practices were prohibited. Remnants of the native religion and beliefs of Norway survive today in the form of names, referential names of cities and locations, the days of the week, and other parts of everyday language. Modern interest in the old ways has led to a revival of pagan religious practices in the form of Asatru. The Norwegian Asatrafelleskapet Bifrist formed in 1996, in 2011, the fellowship had about 300 members. Ferenin Genforn said was formed in 1999 and has been recognized by the Norwegian government. The Sami minority retained their shamanistic religion well into the 18th century, when most converted to Christianity under the influence of Dano-Norwegian Lutheran missionaries. Although some insist that indigenous Sami religion had effectively been eradicated, anthropologist Guttorm Jessing S. Changing Laps argues that the Samis were outwardly and to all practical purposes converted to Christianity. But at the subconscious and unconscious level, the shamstic frenzy survived, more or less latent, only awaiting the necessary stimulus to break out into the open. Today there is a renewed appreciation for the Sami traditional way of life, which has led to a revival of Noidavuahta. Some Norwegian and Sami celebrities are reported to visit shamans for guidance. According to the 2010 Eurobarometer poll, 22% of Norwegian citizens responded that they believe there is a god, 44% responded that they believe there is some sort of spirit or life force and 29% responded that they don't believe there is any sort of spirit, god, or life force. 5% gave no response. Higher education in Norway is offered by a range of seven universities, five specialized colleges, 25 university colleges as well as a range of private colleges. Education follows the Bologna process involving bachelor, master and PhD degrees. Acceptance is offered after finishing upper secondary school with general study competence. Public education is virtually free, regardless of nationality. The academic year has two semesters, from August to December and from January to June. The ultimate responsibility for the education lies with the Norwegian Ministry of Education and Research. Norwegian and Sami are the two official languages of Norway. The North Germanic Norwegian language has two official written forms, Bukmal and Nynorsk. Both are used in public administration, schools, churches, and media. Bukmal is the written language used by a large majority of about 80-85%. Around 95% of the population speak Norwegian as their first or native language although many speak dialects that may differ significantly from the written languages. All Norwegian dialects are mutually intelligible, although listeners with limited exposure to dialects other than their own may struggle to understand certain phrases and pronunciations in some other dialects. Several Uralic Sami languages are spoken and written throughout the country, especially in the north 
by some members of the Sami people. Speakers have a right to be educated and to receive communication from the government in their own language in a special Forvaltning Samrad for Sami languages. The Kvan minority historically spoke the Uralic Kvan language. Today the majority of ethnic Kvan have little or no knowledge of the language. According to the Kainun Institutei, the typical modern Kvan is a Norwegian-speaking Norwegian who knows his genealogy. As Norway has ratified the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages the Kvan language together with Romani and Skanderomani language has become officially recognized minority languages. Some supporters have also advocated making Norwegian Sign Language an official language of the country. In the 19th and 20th centuries, the Norwegian language was subject to strong political and cultural controversies. This led to the development of Nynorsk in the 19th century and to the formation of alternative spelling standards in the 20th century. Norwegian is similar to the other languages in Scandinavia, Swedish and Danish. All three languages are to a degree mutually intelligible and can be, and commonly are, employed in communication among inhabitants of the Scandinavian countries. As a result of the cooperation within the Nordic Council, inhabitants of all Nordic countries, including Iceland and Finland, have the right to communicate with Norwegian authorities in their own language. Students who are children of immigrant parents are encouraged to learn the Norwegian language. The Norwegian government offers language instructional courses for immigrants wishing to obtain Norwegian citizenship. With increasing concern about assimilating immigrants, since September 1, 2008, the government has required that an applicant for Norwegian citizenship give evidence of proficiency in either Norwegian or in one of the Sami languages, or give proof of having attended classes in Norwegian for 300 hours, or meet the language requirements for university studies in Norway. The primary foreign language taught in Norwegian schools is English, considered an international language since the post World War II era. The majority of the population is fairly fluent in English, especially those born after World War II. German, French, and Spanish are also commonly taught as second or, more often, third languages. Russian, Japanese, Italian, Latin, and rarely Chinese are offered in some schools, mostly in the cities. Traditionally, English. German and French were considered the main foreign languages in Norway. These languages, for instance, were used on Norwegian passports until the 1990s, and university students have a general right to use these languages when submitting their theses. The Norwegian farm culture continues to play a role in contemporary Norwegian culture. In the 19th century, it inspired a strong romantic nationalistic movement, which is still visible in the Norwegian language and media. Norwegian culture blossomed with nationalist efforts to achieve an independent identity in the areas of literature, art, and music. This continues today in the performing arts and as a result of government support for exhibitions, cultural projects, and artwork. Norway has been considered a progressive country, which has adopted legislation and policies to support women's rights, minority rights, and LGBT rights. As early as 1884, 171 of the leading figures, among them five prime ministers for the Liberal Party and the Conservative Party, CO founded the Norwegian Association for Women's Rights. They successfully campaigned for women's right to education, women's suffrage, the right to work, and other gender equality policies. From the 1970s, gender equality also came high on the state agenda, with the establishment of a public body to promote gender equality, 
which evolved into the Gender Equality and Anti-Discrimination Ombud. Civil society organizations also continue to play an important role, and the women's rights organizations are today organized in the Norwegian Women's Lobby Umbrella Organization. In 1990, the Norwegian constitution was amended to grant absolute primogeniture to the Norwegian throne, meaning that the eldest child, regardless of gender, takes precedence in the line of succession. As it was not retroactive, the current successor to the throne is the eldest son of the king, rather than his eldest child. The Norwegian Constitution Article 6 states that for those born before the year 1990 it shall be the case that a male shall take precedence over a female. The Sami people have for centuries been the subject of discrimination and abuse by the dominant cultures in Scandinavia and Russia, those countries claiming possession of Sami lands. The Sami people have never been a single community in a single region of Lapland. Norway has been greatly criticized by the international community for the politics of Norwegianization of and discrimination against the indigenous population of the country. Nevertheless, Norway was, in 1990, the first country to recognize ILO Convention 169 on Indigenous People recommended by the UN. In regard to LGBT rights, Norway was the first country in the world to enact an anti-discrimination law protecting the rights of gays and lesbians. In 1993, Norway became the second country to legalize civil union partnerships for same-sex couples, and on January 1, 2009 Norway became the sixth country to grant full marriage equality to same-sex couples. As a promoter of human rights, Norway has held the annual Oslo Freedom Forum Conference, a gathering described by The Economist as on its way to becoming a human rights equivalent of the Davos Economic Forum. Separation of church and state happened significantly later in Norway than in most of Europe and is not yet complete. In 2012, the Norwegian parliament voted to grant the Church of Norway greater autonomy, a decision which was confirmed in a constitutional amendment on May 21, 2012. Until 2012 parliamentary officials were required to be members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Norway, and at least half of all government ministers had to be a member of the state church. As state church, the Church of Norway's clergy were viewed as state employees, and the central and regional church administrations were part of the state administration. Members of the royal family are required to be members of the Lutheran Church. On January 1, 2017, Norway made the church independent of the state, but retained the church's status as the people's church. The Norwegian cinema has received international recognition. The documentary film Kontiki won an Academy Award. In 1959, Arnis Cohen's Nine Lives was nominated, but failed to win. Another notable film is Flay Clip a Grand Prix, an animated feature film directed by Ivo Caprino. The film was released in 1975 and is based on characters from Norwegian cartoonist Kjell Akrust. It is the most widely seen Norwegian film of all time. Nils Gop's Pathfinder the Story of the Sami, was nominated for an Oscar. Barrett Neshim's The Other Side of Sunday was nominated for an Oscar in 1997. Since the 1990s, the film industry has thrived, producing up to 20 feature films each year. Particular successes were Kristen Laverne's Datter, based on a novel by a Nobel Prize winner, the Telegraphist and Gurin with the Foxtail. Nut Eric Jensen was among the more successful new directors, together with Eric Skjoldbjog, who is remembered for insomnia.
The country has also been used as filming location for several Hollywood and other international productions, including The Empire Strikes Back, for which the producers used Hardanger Jaculin Glacier as a filming location for scenes of the ice planet Hoth. It included a memorable battle in the snow. The films Die Another Day, The Golden Compass, Spies Like Us and Heroes of Telemark, as well as the TV series Lily Hammer and Vikings also had scenes set in Norway. A short film, The Spirit of Norway was featured at Maelstrom at Norway Pavilion at Epcot located within Walt Disney World Resort in Florida in the United States. The attraction and the film ceased their operations on October 5, 2014. The classical music of the Romantic composers Edvard Grieg, Richard Nordrake, and Johann Svensson is internationally known, as is the modern music of Arne Nordheim. Norway's classical performers include Leif Ove Ansnes, one of the world's more famous pianists, Truls Mrk, an outstanding cellist, and the great Wagnerian soprano Kirsten Flagstad. Norwegian black metal, a form of rock music in Norway, has been an influence in world music since the late 20th century. Since the 1990s, Norway's export of black metal, a lo-fi, dark and raw form of heavy metal, has been developed by such bands as Emperor, Dark Throne, Gorgo Roth, Mayhem, Burzum, and Immortal. More recently bands such as Enslaved, Kvalerduk, Dimu Borger and Sadie Ricken have evolved the genre into the present day while still garnering worldwide fans. Controversial events associated with the black metal movement in the early 1990s included several church burnings and two prominent murder cases. The jazz scene in Norway is thriving. Jan Garbarak, Terj Riptal, Mari Boyne, Harold Andersen, and Bug Wesseltoft are internationally recognized while Paul Nilsson Love, Super Silent, Jaga Jazzist and YBUT are becoming world-class artists of the younger generation. Norway has a strong folk music tradition which remains popular to this day. Among the most prominent folk musicians are Hardanja fiddlers Andrea Ean, Olaf Jergen Hege and Anjerg Lien, and the vocalists Agnes Bune Garnas, Kirsten Brottenberg and Odd Nordstoga. Other internationally recognized bands are AHA, Royksop, Elvis. AHA initially rose to global fame during the mid 1980s. In the 1990s and 2000s, the group maintained its popularity domestically, and has remained successful outside Norway, especially in Germany, Switzerland, France, and Brazil. Some of the most memorable female solo artists from Norway are Astrid S., Adeline, Julie Bergen, Maria Mina, Tone Damley, Margaret Berger, Lean Marlin, Crystal Alsos, Maria Arredondo, Lean NYSTRM vocalist of the popular Danish dance band Aqua and Marion Raven and Merit Larsen both former members of the defunct pop rock band M2M. In recent years, various Norwegian songwriters and production teams have contributed to the music of other international artists. The Norwegian production team Stargate has produced songs for Rihanna, Beyoncé, Shakira, Jennifer Lopez, and Lionel Richie, among others. Aspinland has written and produced songs for Beyoncé, Lionel Richie, and Leona Lewis, among others. Lean Marlin has written songs for Rihanna and Lovebugs. Ina Roldson has written songs for artists such as Demi Lovato, Shakira, Inna, Sophie Ellis Bexter, One Direction, and The Saturdays among others. Norway enjoys many music festivals throughout the year, all over the country. Norway is the host of one of the world's biggest extreme sport festivals with music. Extremsportveco a festival held annually in Voss. 
Oslo is the host of many festivals, such as Yafestivalen and Bailarm. Oslo used to have a summer parade similar to the German Love Parade. In 1992, the city of Oslo wanted to adopt the French music festival Fête de la Musique. Frederick Karlströmer established the festival. Even in its first year, Musikkensdag gathered thousands of people and artists in the streets of Oslo. Musikkensdag is now renamed Musikfest Oslo. The history of Norwegian literature starts with the pagan Eddike poems and skaldic verse of the 9th and 10th centuries, with poets such as Bragi Bodison and Evindra Skaldaspalur. The arrival of Christianity around the year 1000 brought Norway into contact with European medieval learning, hagiography, and history writing. Merged with native oral tradition and Icelandic influence, this influenced the literature written in the late 12th and early 13th centuries. Major works of that period include Historia Norwegi, Eirk Saga and Kanung Skugsha. Little Norwegian literature came out of the period of the Scandinavian Union and the subsequent Dano-Norwegian Union, with some notable exceptions such as Petter Das and Ludvig Hallberg. In his play Pier Gynt, Ibsen characterized this period as twice 200 years of darkness slash brooded o'er the race of monkeys. The first line of this couplet is frequently quoted. During the union with Denmark, the government imposed using only written Danish, which decreased the writing of Norwegian literature. Two major events precipitated a major resurgence in Norwegian literature. In 1811 a Norwegian university was established in Christiania. Secondly, seized by the spirit of revolution following the American and French revolutions, the Norwegians created their first constitution in 1814. Strong authors were inspired who became recognized first in Scandinavia, and then worldwide, among them were Henrik Wergland. Peter Christen Asp Jaronson, Jergen Mo, and Camilla Collett. By the late 19th century, in the golden age of Norwegian literature, the so called Great Four emerged Henrik Ibsen, Jarens Jern Jaronson, Alexander Kielland, and Jonas Lie. Jaronson's peasant novels, such as Ein Glad Gut and Sindv Salbakn, are typical of the Norwegian Romantic nationalism of their day. Keelan's novels and short stories are mostly naturalistic. Although an important contributor to early Romantic nationalism, Henrik Ibsen is better known for his pioneering realistic dramas such as The Wild Duck and A Doll's House. They caused an uproar because of his candid portrayals of the middle classes, complete with infidelity, unhappy marriages, and corrupt businessmen. In the 20th century, three Norwegian novelists were awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature, Jernst Jern Jernson in 1903, Nut Homsen for the book Markens GRD in 1920, and Sigrid Unset in 1928. Writers such as the following also made important contributions, Dag Solstad, John Foss, Cora Sandel, Olaf Duhun, Olaf H. Hogg, Gunver Hoffmo, Stein Murren, Kiel Askeltsen, Hans Herb Jarens Rudd, Axel Sandy Mose, Berkeljot Hobikaf, Jostein Garter, Eric Fosnes Hansen, Jens Bjernabo, K. Jarden Flogstad, Lars Sabi Christensen, Johan Borgen, Herb Jerg Wasso, Jan Eric Vold, Rolf Jacobson, Olaf Bull, Jan Kagerstad, George Johannesson, Targi Ivasas, Sigurd Hull, Arnulf Verland, Karl Ove Nosgaard and Johan Falkberget. Internationally recognized Norwegian scientists include the mathematicians Niels Henrik Abel, Sophus Lie and Adel Selberg. 
physical chemist Lars Onsager, physicist Ivor Yaver, chemist Saad Hassel, Peter Weich, and Cato Maximilian Goldberg. In the 20th century, Norwegian academics have been pioneering in many social sciences, including criminology, sociology, and peace and conflict studies. Prominent academics include Arne Nies, a philosopher and founder of Deep Ecology, Johan Galtung, the founder of Peace Studies, Nils Christie and Thomas Matheson, criminologists, Frederick Barth, a social anthropologist, Wilhelm Aubert, Harriet Holter, and Eric Grnseth, sociologists, Tove Stang Dahl, a pioneer of women's law, Stein Rocken, a political scientist, and economists Ragnar Frisch, Trigov Havelmo, and Finn E. Kidland. In 2014, the two Norwegian scientists May Britt Moser and Edvard Moser won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine along with John O'Keefe. They won the prize for their groundbreaking work identifying the cells that make up a positioning system in the human brain, our inbuilt GPS. With expansive forests, Norway has long had a tradition of building in wood. Many of today's most interesting new buildings are made of wood, reflecting the strong appeal that this material continues to hold for Norwegian designers and builders. With Norway's conversion to Christianity some 1,000 years ago, churches were built. Stonework architecture was introduced from Europe for the most important structures, beginning with the construction of Nidaros Cathedral in Trondheim. In the early Middle Ages, wooden stave churches were constructed throughout Norway. Some of them have survived, they represent Norway's most unusual contribution to architectural history. A fine example, an stave church in Inner Sognefjord, is on UNESCO's World Heritage List. Another notable example of wooden architecture is the buildings at Briggen Wharf in Bergen also on the list for World Cultural Heritage Sites, consisting of a row of tall, narrow wooden structures along the quayside. In the 17th century, under the Danish monarchy, cities and villages such as Kongsberg and Rose were established. The city had a church built in the Baroque style. Traditional wooden buildings that were constructed in Rose have survived. After Norway's union with Denmark was dissolved in 1814, Oslo became the capital. The architect Christian H. Grosch designed the earliest parts of the University of Oslo, the Oslo Stock Exchange, and many other buildings and churches constructed in that early national period. At the beginning of the 20th century, the city of Aalesund was rebuilt in the Art Nouveau style, influenced by styles of France. The 1930s, when functionalism dominated, became a strong period for Norwegian architecture. It is only since the late 20th century that Norwegian architects have achieved international renown. One of the most striking modern buildings in Norway is the Sami Parliament in Krajaa designed by Stein Halverson and Christian Sundby. Its debating chamber, in timber, is an abstract version of a lavo, the traditional tent used by the nomadic Sami people. For an extended period, the Norwegian art scene was dominated by artwork from Germany and Holland as well as by the influence of Copenhagen. It was in the 19th century that a truly Norwegian era began first with portraits, later with impressive landscapes. Johann Christian Dahl, originally from the Dresden School, eventually returned to paint the landscapes of western Norway, defining Norwegian painting for the first time. Norway's newly found independence from Denmark encouraged painters to develop their Norwegian identity, especially with landscape painting by artists such as Kitty Kielland, 
a female painter who studied under Hans Gude, and Harriet Backer, another pioneer among female artists, influenced by Impressionism. Fritz Thalo, an Impressionist, was influenced by the art scene in Paris as was Christian Krog, a realist painter, famous for his paintings of prostitutes. Of particular note is Edvard Munch, a symbolist-slash-expressionist painter who became world-famous for the scream which is said to represent the anxiety of modern man. Other artists of note include Harold Solberg, a neo-romantic painter remembered for his paintings of Rose, and Odd Nerdrum, a figurative painter who maintains that his work is not art, but kitsch. Norway's culinary traditions show the influence of long seafaring and farming traditions, with salmon, herring, trout, codfish, and other seafood, balanced by cheeses, dairy products, and breads. Lefs is a Norwegian potato flatbread, usually topped with large amounts of butter and sugar, most common around Christmas. Some traditional Norwegian dishes include lutefisk, smalahov, pinekjait, raspy ball, and farikal. Sports are a central part of Norwegian culture, and popular sports include association football, biathlon, cross-country skiing, ski jumping, speed skating, and, to a lesser degree, ice hockey and handball. Association football is the most popular sport in Norway in terms of active membership. In 2014-2015 polling, football ranked far behind biathlon and cross-country skiing in terms of popularity as spectator sports. Ice hockey is the biggest indoor sport. The women's handball national team has won several titles, including two Summer Olympics Championships, three World Championships, and six European Championship. The Norwegian national football team has participated three times in the FIFA World Cup, and once in the European Championship. The highest FIFA ranking Norway has achieved is second, a position it has held twice, in 1993 and in 1995. Chess is also gaining popularity in Norway. Magnus Carlsen is the current world champion. There are about 10 grandmasters and 29 international masters in Norway. Bandy is a traditional sport in Norway and the country is one of the four founders of Federation of International Bandy. In terms of licensed athletes, it is the second biggest winter sport in the world. As of January 2018, the men's national team has captured one silver and one bronze, while the women's national team has managed five bronzes at the World Championships. Norway first participated at the Olympic Games in 1900, and has sent athletes to compete in every game since then except for the sparsely attended 1904 Games and the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow when they participated in the American-led boycott. Norway leads the overall medal tables at the Winter Olympic Games with considerable margin. Famous Norwegian winter sport athletes includes biathlete Ole Enerb Jerndalen, speed skaters Johan Olav Koss and Hjalmar Andersen, figure skater Sonia Henny and cross-country skiers Merit Bjergen and BJR and Eli. Norway has hosted the Games on two occasions. The following are international rankings of Norway, including those measuring life quality, health care quality, stability, press freedom, and income. Coordinates 61 degrees north 8 degrees east slash 61 degrees north 8 degrees east slash 61, 8.